Hello again everyone um, and today we're going to do the uh, stock module demonstration okay so we're logging in again as uh, admin UK and our connection is over the local area network uh, on the internet okay and we're using the demo corporation okay so sign in okay so we're going to go to the inventory module okay the layout <coughs> if you uh, have looked at the other demo videos on the other modules is exactly the same we've got new got find got tools we've got a workflow menu yeah we've got the dashboards okay um, so let's start <coughs> uh, on a new item okay now the stock items consist of normal stock items non stock items so obviously non stock items are not going to keep track of uh, stock quantities or a kind of stock ledger um, item matrix. This is where we have um, lots of attributes. For example, T-shirts, uh, which we showed uh, selling some T-shirts in the actual sales order in the customer uh, demo, uh, where we can have sizes and colours as a matrix, sizes and styles and colours. Um, kits, uh, where we can actually specify a, a kit, a, a kit configuration. So for like, like a computer, for example, uh, you could say, well, what motherboard do you want? What RAM do you want? Uh, what kind of hard disk do you want um, and then it kind of makes up the item uh, okay we've got assembly items so these th these are things that we do actually sell as a whole as a finished product but we have underneath it components so we can actually take out the components out of stock and put the finished item into stock and obviously cost that finished item it's not manufacturing by any stretch of the imagination but it is a way of let's say manufacturing items and then telling the system you've manufactured the items so it kind of issues all the components Okay, so let's create a normal stock item to begin with. Okay, it's asking me for an item code. If I want the system to generate the item code for me, I can just bypass that. Okay, and then I put in a description. Um, and what we'll do is we'll call this example stock item. Okay, I've also got an extended description. Okay, where I can type whatever I want. Um, I can also, uh, up here, if you notice, we've got um, a templates and class codes um, this puts in the defaults behind this particular type of item so we may have defaults for stock items we may have defaults for uh, matrix items uh, and we might have uh, it, it's just if I double click on that it'll actually drill down to sort of say what's the default unit of measure for stock items what's our you know usual you know, category codes manufacturers all this type of stuff so when I actually create the item it'll default default all that information in for me Okay, the next thing is who's the manufacturer? So obviously I can ha I can do a <coughs> a list of uh, you know user-defined manufacturers. Sales tax option. Do I want the sales tax to come from the customer or the item? Okay, so <coughs> the logic behind this is, if I'm in the UK and I'm selling to UK customers, <coughs> okay, and I specify on the item that I'm selling I want it to come from the item, then it will actually use the tax code that I specify on the item. For example, uh, children's clothes, they're zero rated uh, tax. So <clears throat> on children's clothes, I could have uh, the tax code specified. Uh, on other items, I can have, uh, I, I can not specify it. Um, <clears throat> but if I'm selling to, let's say, someone in France, okay, then it would ignore my settings on here, okay, and it would, and it would use the default tax code on the customer account, effectively because, you know, I'm always going to use, let's say, EC sales to a business in France. Uh, it doesn't matter whether, you know, from my point of view, where it's taxable or non-taxable, I'm always going to charge EC sales as the tax code. Okay, so there's the sales tax option logic. Uh, is it commissionable? Do we actually pay commission to our sales rep or agent on this item? Um, commodity code, you know, for obviously our interest at from the from the EU point of view, and stock take days. How <coughs> how often do we actually want to stock take this item? So if I put seven days in there, what it'll do is. Um, I can actually run a stock take based on overdue items, so I can, so, I, so it, may, it, it ensures that I stock take stuff regularly. Okay, so the next page is what units of measure do I want? I've got a default unit of measure. I can actually change that default unit of measure to something else if I wanted to, and I can obviously pick other units of measure, like a dozen, let's say. Um, on the actual item, it puts 12 in there, but if I wanted to specify a different quantity, I could, okay? So, for example, dozens for this item could be 14s or 15s, let's say, yeah? Um, I can also specify, let's say, I don't know, kilograms and actually put a fraction of a unit of measure. So I could say, well, it's a 0.5, 
okay I can also specify different weights and net weights and volumes for each type of unit of measure as well I can pick categories that I want to put this item into let's say the motherboard I can also put subcategories I can put them into departments whoops um, okay now I can decide on the costing method and in sta the standard version we have average standard FIFO or LIFO okay um, and here I can I can kick off an average price I can kick off a standard price and I can kick off a last price and obviously when I next order one it'll override the last cost and it will recalculate the average we made a lot of effort here to make sure that the average uh, never goes negative it is only updated by uh, the actual uh, purchase invoice or bill um, okay Th this is where we can specify suppliers uh, if we want to uh, so I'm going to say that supplier and that supplier is the people we usually buy this item from the lead times usually let's say two days and four days from them that's my priority one supplier so that will always be my main supplier the cost price from that supplier is 199 let's say yeah the cost price from that one is that one okay so what it's saying to me now is what pricing methods do you want to set up for this item so if I just say I just want a wholesale and a retail price I can just type it in yeah 100 um, and 200 and a retail price of 300 now then if you notice this message that's coming up it says do you want to calculate the other currency prices so if I say yes it'll take the, ex the exchange rate at this moment in time times the 300 by I don't know what's it 1.5 for the euro and whatever the dollar rate is okay but I can actually specify separate uh, amounts for the do for, in dollars as opposed to that and not update the the, the, the other figures <clears throat> now listed here in this system are all 250 odd currencies of the world okay but in setup you decide which currencies you actually want to show when you're setting up pricing so obviously we've got it specified here you know pounds and euros and dollars yeah whoops okay okay so that's that's what only appears here the pound the euro and the dollar and obviously that's our base currency there now there are other ways okay um, of specifying sales prices so it could be a fixed amount on a pricing cost and the pricing cost can be a pricing cost that you tell your salespeople that you cost but it you know it might be an inflated cost price or a fixed amount on last cost now the good thing about that is uh, it, if you kind of want to say I want a particular margin or a particular you know, percentage mark upon last cost price when you when the last cost changes so your selling prices or you can just say no I just want to make a profit margin of whatever on it so if I say right mark upon last cost price I should just do a mark upon the pricing cost because you can see it easily there okay yep yeah. so I'm gonna say my pricing cost is 200 and I want to increase this by 10 pounds okay so it's 210 if I did a percentage a mark upon the pricing cost it would now change that to 10 percent so 10 percent of that yeah, is that and if I said I wanted 50% to make up the retail price you can see how that's made up okay all right so that's creating a stock item this is the actual stock item record okay now the different types of stock item like the matrix item and the kit item all that's really different about them is they have different tabs so like the kit item would have a kit you know a tab and the matrix item would have a matrix tab so this is a kind of normal stock item okay we can have uh, photos okay and so if I double click that I can pick an image um, from from my you know from my image files um, I can have custom fields I can see recent transactions and I can see the stock information like <coughs> in stock committed free stock what's on back order what's on purchase order what's in transit from other warehouses and what's in my other location